Dr. Lou George, Dr. Dennis Miller, Siouxland Oral Surgery. Gentlemen, nice to have you back with us. Thanks, Bill. Glad to be back. Thanks, Bill. One of the key areas that I know that you have spent a lot of time uh, looking at demographics and actually doing some work is the dental implants. What's happened in 17? What's going to happen in the future? And what should our listeners kind of pay attention to? Well, dental implants historically have been around since the 70s in various forms, shapes, and sizes. And as the patents came off different implants, more and more companies entered into the market. And I think at last count, and I'm certainly not an expert at how many implant companies there are out there, but it's well into the 300s, 400s, and that's just in North America. So some of the things that are up and coming in in 18, 19, 20 moving forward is when you get dental implants, it's important to stick with the leaders in the field. And there's only about three different companies that pretty well take care of 80% of the market share. And we've chosen to go with Noble BioCare, which is the leader in the field. They have the greatest market share, and they've been at it the longest. They're the ones that invented dental implants. So you can trust the science that they have. Any of the literature that you see where other people have tested their science against other implants and in other studies, it holds up really, really well all the way through. The danger, I think, moving forward is you have a lot of other little companies that sometimes the dentist themselves has a proprietary interest in. And having met some of these companies and some of these people, their main goal is to make it enough of a pain in the rear for the big companies that their little company will be sold and bought out, and then that implant line will be gone. So moving forward, you might get discounted implants, but they're discounted for a reason. That's right. And so I think sticking with more reputable companies with a bigger, or sorry, longer track record, which is what we do, uh, that's part of what the listeners should ask their oral surgeon, you know, what uh, implant company are they using and why are they using it? So I think that's part of it. Um, a lot of these companies don't bring things to market unless there's a lot of research behind it. Again, using Nobel as the the key for that is they came out with a uh, an implant that was actually manufactured in in uh, Israel to begin with. And it took them 10 years to bring it to the American market because they wanted to test it. And it's got probably the best holding power of any implant out there. Um, it changed the game through something called platform switching. Um, and now they're using it on uh, uh, in, in different ways to uh, anchor dentures in this new type of design called the trefoil technique, which we talked about in a different uh, uh, different sitting. So those are some of the things that are evolving. And I think that you're moving into 2018 and 19, you're really going to need a specialist in dental implants to kind of get all the information that you need to make a proper decision. We've talked about this before. If all you have is a hammer, everything is a nail. Whereas board certified oral surgeons, we know all the different parts of surgery and all the different parts of grafting. So we can give our patients a good amount of information to make a decision on what kind of implant setup they want, what kind of bone grafting can they or should they or should not have. That's all part of the informed consent process. So that that's the things I think people have to think about in 2018, 2019, 2020, moving forward. They just can't take everyone's word for it like, oh, I'm going to get implants and then just do whatever so-and-so says. Do You have to be able to do your research. And I think Dr. George and I do a great job of uh, being able to educate people on the website through our links. And, of course, if they come for a consult, I mean, the CT and the consult's free. Come on in. Pick our brain. We'll be glad to, you know, give you an opinion. And one of the things we always tell our patients when, when they're there and we, we have their attention talking to them, I mean, the products that we're going to be providing to them are all products that – we use on our own family, we have used on our own family, we've used, you know, on each other, you know, to restore teeth. So, I mean, this comes down to it quite honestly, and I say this in all of my consults, is that, first of all, we're never going to give a patient more than they need. You know, they're, they're there for a certain purpose. We're not looking to, to, to sell them a home in Florida at the same time. It's not about that. On the other hand, we're not going to sign off on garbage either. We would never take the shortcut or kind of under-treat just to patch something up or get something by. 
Uh, both Dr. Miller and I are placing these implants or bone grafting these areas for the long haul, meaning we expect them to live up to what the implant companies say, which in a lot of cases is indefinite. So, you know, uh, we, we really pride ourselves on that. And uh, like uh, Dr. Miller said, the consult and the CT scan are free. Our time is free. That's when you get to come in and sit and talk. Uh, and like I said, any, anything you wanted to know about dental implants, we'll be happy to provide you the information with. Whether you choose to go that route or not, you'll definitely leave with a much better uh, comprehensive and practical understanding of it. I think uh, when I hear that the average age for dental implants is around 43 here in the Sioux Falls office, that's breaking news. Breaking news in a way that would surprise me a little bit. But uh, we start hearing about 12, 14, 15-year-olds that are maybe involved. Is that the changing trend? Well, you, you, have, <clears throat> you have to be very careful on putting dental implants in, in kids, teenagers in specific, because facial growth continues into 18, 19, 20, it's very minimal, but it, it does occur. And in a small subset of the population, it's significant enough that if you put in an implant way too early, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15, somewhere right around there, the amount of facial growth that occurs leaves the implant behind. The implant doesn't grow with the face like teeth. It's not biological. So it doesn't quite follow the same pathway as teeth do. And then all of a sudden you're 25 and the implant crown that you had is now way too short and it's to pick on the maxilla um, if it was placed at 15 or 14 not only is it too short now it's part way in your palate and it's just really tough to get a prosthetic that'll work a lot of times you just have to take it out now there is a subset uh, a population of patients that are born with almost no teeth now in that population for psychosocial reasons and for mastication yeah you'll put implants in it 8, 9, 10 but in 20 years, I've probably seen maybe about three or four of those that are complete anodontia cases and needed something like that. So it's a very limited set. The vast majority of the kids, right around 17, is you're pretty safe. And a lot of times what we'll do is we'll take a CT scan one year, and then we'll take one another year. And then because there's no distortion in the CT scans, you can superimpose them. And if there's no facial growth, then you know you can place them in with a fair degree of um, confidence that in the future, the prosthetics are still going to be viable. And so that's one patient population. The rest of it is uh, people that, for a variety of reasons, their teeth have uh, su succumbed to use over the years, whether that be cavities or root canals or fractures. And uh, a lot of people we're seeing right now would like to have, let's say, a front tooth that's failed on them. Uh, removed and an immediate implant place. That can certainly be done for the vast majority of people. Uh, posterior teeth, it's a little bit harder. I'd say that's about 70% of the time we can do it, 30% we can't. And then the other patient population we tend to see is um, the, uh, the elderly that are in good health that would like to have either um, partial dentures stabilized with dental implants or their dentures stabilized with implants, or uh, they'd like to go for full fixed prosthetics. But we talked about it in an earlier segment. You have to keep an eye to how well people can take care of these things, because if you can't take care of them, you can put in all this beautiful work and all kinds of implants and all kinds of bridges, and if you can't take care of them, they're, they're going to fail in five years, and then you've spent pretty well, like Dr. George said, the mortgage and you're you're not going to get use of them. So part of what we talk about is what are the different types of treatments that are available? What can we do? What do we think is is reasonable? And what's the risk versus benefit ratio? And what is and what economically makes sense? Better quality of life seems to be the center of this. And make sure that you come in and be consulted. Know your options because you don't want to have something that happens a year from now, five years from now, 20 years from now. Yeah, we see uh, we we place a lot of implants, and we see a lot of people, you know, been through it for twenty years. So we see have people have gone through some of the different stages of their life, and one of the things that we've seen um, is a lot of people do clench and grind, and if nobody's really watching about the clenching and grinding, either by adjusting the occlusion or getting people in the night guards, that'll overload the implants. So, I guess one of the take homes from this segment for the listeners are: is if you're getting a full mouth reconstruction or even just the back teeth reconstructed if no one is watching the way the teeth come together and putting you in a night guard especially if you know you clench and grind if nobody's looking nobody knows 
then you'll blow out those implants and cause significant damage to them in about five years, and you just spent a boatload of money, and that would just be a shame. And when you lose bone, then putting a new set of implants in later is a lot harder. So how do they get started? Well, the first thing is either uh, talk to your dentist or give us a call directly. And um, our policy is for dental implants, it's a free consult and a free free CT. And we can certainly um, get you the information and discuss your case with you. And then you can go back to your dentist. Or if you don't have a dentist, we can find one for you that's either close to home or close to work and get you on that path if you're interested in and, and if you're a candidate. Dr. Lou George, Dr. Dennis Miller, Siouxland Oral Surgery, Sioux Falls, Mitchell, Brookings, Yankton. Thanks for the visit. Thanks, Thanks Bill. Thanks, Bill. Have a great day.